Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into the big one, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our play-by-email challenge with one devilish Mr. Laudrick, and it is now March 11th, 1942. This is the setup phase, and we're going to go around, look at the stats, take a big overview of the map, and probably get down into the islands of the South Pacific. I've kind of left them alone. I don't know. I wouldn't say I've left them alone, but we probably haven't focused on them as much as maybe we should. Uh, early in the game, they are a huge focus as you try to get men and resources out there. Uh, so we'll go take a look. Uh, part of that, uh, the reason I haven't, is just because they, in the middle here of 1942, they become a huge battleground. And so we'll be spending a lot of time there. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, do our usual, and that begins with the intelligence report. And the intelligence report tells us that we ran 6,223 sorties, the Japanese 7754, during the last turn. We had two air-to-air -air losses, the Japanese none, nothing was destroyed on a field, and nothing was destroyed by flak. We took 15 operational losses, uh, we'll talk about that as we go along here, uh, and the Japanese took four, and those are about even now. Uh, we would certainly like to see the Japanese higher than that. We have 515 political points, and right now the Japanese uh, Lodericks at about 15 almost 16,000 points, we're at 7609. We control 449 bases, Lodric controls 389. Uh, aircraft points lost, we're at 1087, he's at 667. Uh, Army points lost, 6946 to 131. Ship sunk, we've had 402. The Japanese have eight that we know about. Ship sunk, last turn. Uh, we lost a destroyer, the Clark. We lost a destroyer, the Bankert, which was the Dutch sub. Uh, we lost an AKL, a little two-point Commonwealth. Uh, we lost the light cruiser, Durban, to a bomb. And we also lost the Hermod, a uh, two-pointer uh, Commonwealth ship. Okay, so all in all, we lost about 40 points there out in the seas. So Lodric had a pretty decent turn. Uh, chopping us up a little bit uh, on the 9th and 10th. Uh, let's go back. Uh, group reinforcement schedule. Let's go see what's coming in. Uh, Aircraft-wise, Swordfish at Aiden. Uh, we get these Kitty Hawks at Brisbane, and we've talked about those uh, numerous times. The Kitty Hawks at Brisbane and also at Perth, much, much uh, welcomed. We need all of the aircraft we can get uh, in Australia. I'm trying to get them there from the U.S., uh, but getting them naturally like this uh, really helps. Okay, and you can see the British get uh, the CV, the formidable, out here. Uh, <clears throat> I believe that comes in at Cape Town in four days, and that'll be nice. Whoops, we didn't want to get all the way out of that report. Um... Let's look at our top pilots. We now have Stone with six kills, so he is an ace plus one. We also have Carey here, who has five kills, and we have a number of pilots with four, just short of ace status, and then quite a number with three as well. So starting to, you know, get more and more guys up here near ace status. You can see what our best aircraft is, certainly. <laughs> it's the Hurricane 2B Trop. Uh, the Warhawks are okay you know i mean they're early american uh kind of the workhorse of the early american uh, air war uh they're okay you know but uh the hurricane 2b trops are really nice plane uh the h81s these are the flying tigers uh, you see a buffalo pop up here and i'm not talking about the one that roams across the plains this is the buffalo one uh fighter uh it's you know again it's not as good as the trops uh certainly not Back we go. Ship availability. What do we got coming in here, guys? Well, let's go to ETA, and we'll do the old double sort. Get up here to the top. Uh, nothing interesting there. There's the formidable, which is very interesting. As part of that, we also get a couple of destroyers, uh, although they don't come directly in with the formidable. One comes in at Mombasa. Uh, Mombasa, I just like to say that. And the arrow comes in at Aden. Um, you know, we'll have to sail them down to Cape Town 
because really, you know, we want uh, those level 8 ASWs to be with the carrier, certainly. We get a new submarine, the Grouper out at Balboa. Some new ACMs. We start getting a lot of these ACMs. that are the mine tenders. Uh, it's giving you a big hint. Make sure you're mining every single port where uh, the Japanese may land from this point forward. Every place he's been so far... You know, it would have been very hard to get mine layers out there. I'm not saying that we couldn't. I mean, early on, cer certainly in the Dutch East Indies, you can lay some mines where he may land and whatnot. But now, the little, the smaller islands in the South Pacific, we need to load those up with mines and get ACMs out there. If you look, these are only two-point ships, and so you can keep them even at a place that you think may get bombed uh, to mine those uh, mines. Mind those mines, sure, um, and make sure that they, you know, the mines uh, stick around for a while because they do degrade over time, and especially if you don't have an ACM. Uh, the new castle comes into Cape Town in six. Eh, what else? What else? Eh, nothing too interesting there. I mean, you get some destroyers, you get a KV at Victoria Island. You know, is that exciting? I don't. Well, sort of. Um, okay, so that ship availability. And then we get the ground reinforcement schedule. You know that the cores coming back into Chongqing, whether they were destroyed earlier or just forming up now, uh, always exciting. But you just see the vast number of them. We just keep getting them uh, all the time uh, in, in that area. But you see, as we go down here, it's going to be a while before we get any more. And so, you know, a lot of this was uh, early Chinese cores that got destroyed. Now they're coming back onto the map. Um, you know, getting reformed. But after that, you know, we go a long ways where we don't get that many new ones. So we got to make these count. All right, let's exit out of there. Uh, we're hovering over Pearl Harbor. We actually have a lot of transports here right now, but they're ones that have gone out into the South Pacific. Now they're back and we'll just disband those because usually they're mismatched. Now we do have this AP... Oh, I brought this over from the coast along with the Idaho and some destroyers. And so, you know, this kind of, it's fully loaded. What we would want to do is take out this AP and then disband the rest of this task force. So if you ever want to know how you do something like that, you would just form a new task force, go to transport. There it is. All right. And we'll find... Oh, gosh. What was the name of that transport? Hold on. Make sure you know that. Clip Funtine. Okay. Form new task force. Transport. And then transport. Done. And then we'll have to go find the Clip Funtine. I always like to just sort by type. It's easier to find it that way. So we'll take that. Done. All right. And now it's its own task force. And you can go back to the other one, which is this one. Now you can disband it into port. I like to disband them and then reform them. Even if you think the ships are going to be together in the next task force, this way they refuel, especially at a place like Pearl Harbor where you're never going to run out of fuel. Uh, literally, no matter what you do, you would never really run out of fuel here if you're bringing any at all from the west coast of the U.S. Um, this Clifentine, this is an AA regiment. We'll see what we want to do with that. And then we have another one that's gone into the South Pacific and come back, so we'll disband. And then, you know, they're going to be here at uh, anchor, and then you can go grab them. You can see the Yorktown and the Enterprise. Uh, those will be going back to upgrade uh, come April 1st. That'll be good. And then show ships under repair. We've got the Lexington and the Saratoga already back in the shipyard. And they are being refit, and you can see they pop up to a 1702 on the anti-aircraft. Uh, hard to get much better than that, uh, certainly at this point of the game. We also have a lot of battleships in the shipyard. You know, we're way over here. So I'm going to have to, during this turn, come take some of this out of the shipyard. What I would probably do is take the ones that are years away, literally years away, like the Oklahoma. Um, and then we'll just put that at pier side even though it's stood down. So, you know, it's got a lot of major damage, right? And you usually would want that in the shipyard. But this is so far away from being repaired. You know, it was going to be, what, two years almost? Or a year and a half, two years? Uh, or something like the Tennessee, right? That's almost two full years. Just, you know, 
put that peer side for now. And then as things start to move out, you know, you get this tonnage down to 100,000. That's what we'd be trying to do. But why in the world am I talking about Pearl Harbor? We've got to go look around the map. So let's go up and just kind of peek around, see what's going on. A lot of, you know, the usual Abaddon, Auden, Aden stuff, uh, stuff coming into Karachi. What do we have coming in here? Well, we've got tankers, and usually I have these on CS. These are not, these are shorter endurance tankers, so they're perfect for the old Abaddon to Karachi run. And uh, next time they get up here, I will turn them on continuous supply so we don't have to go back and give them orders all the time. Do I have any ships at Karachi? Uh, we've got an AM there. Okay, uh, yeah, let's see what we got in at Aden, what's sitting in port. AMCs. I like to hide those in the early game. We do have some APs here. We've got a number of AKs, too many of them actually, and some of these 12s here for speed uh, I'll try to get out of here and send over to Cape Town. Uh, I like to keep my faster ones 14 and above. Uh, I'm talking cargo ships here here because they can transport aircraft down to Karachi. They can also go with the transports and take the gear of the troops over to Karachi. Well, the transports are usually, you know, you can see the transports, the APs up here, 21, 20, 17, 15, 14, 20. So you get the idea. They're usually 14 and above. Well, you don't want to bog them down with these 12 transports. So we'll batch up all these transports, send them to Cape Town, where they can just take supply over to Perth. Okay, let's get out of there. We've still got this action going in and around Socotra. Uh, I just wanted to build this up a little bit. We've got units that are coming onto the map that uh, you know you cannot set it up directly from Abaddon to Cape Town because the Mediterranean is blocked here. So um, instead we'll bring it onto the map here and then have this if we look at it uh its home port as cape town so it gets to this hex it says oh what do i do next well retirement is allowed so i'm going to retire to cape town the game automatically gives it this destination so that's going to head down there in my continu continuing pursuit to get as much cargo or as many cargo ships to cape town as i can two reasons for that one is you need to get as much into australia from cape town as you can and also they're protected there uh it's just easy points that laudrick can't pick up if those ships are sit sitting at cape town if for whatever reason you don't need them right at the moment i have a huge ah this isn't such a huge uh transport group this is a smaller one the raf uh, 222 group uh, this is moving to Colombo, but I put it in as waypoints, so it's going to come around this way. He's had submarine activity, you know, in this area, so I'm just bringing it all the way around. This also gives it time. I'll have it sit here, make sure his uh, carriers are nowhere close, wait till I get a visual on his carriers, maybe around Singapore or something, then I'll bring this into Colombo. Uh, you don't want to be losing valuable transports or air units like that. Uh, this is another group, tankers, that are heading off, or just one, the Fenris, that's heading to Cape Town. What do we have up here? This is a transport, two APs. Okay, uh, I've got, oh, I just have them retreating away from Bombay. I thought we got a sighting on his carriers. Did we, though? uh these are not that i just can't remember i'll have to go back and look at the entire log just to make sure um yeah i don't see them anywhere on the map well anyway i decided to get those transports out of bombay just in case what else is going on at bombay well we got a number of fighters one a group of one squadron of these i'm skipping down these are hurricane one b's uh hurricane one trops um think it's this group yeah it's 222 group that I want to take to Colombo so we'll just sort by sport I don't think I can get them all the way to Colombo this time I have to go into like Hyderabad although that would take us over I'll have to go into Madras so we'll just put them in Madras and then they can jump over to Colombo because they are part of the 222 group 
which is in Colombo. Now, we could change their command if we wanted to. 225 is in Madras, I believe. It is indeed. 225 Group RAF is here. Uh, plans are pretty cheap to uh, change. Now, right down here, you see we've got the uh, Australian 6th. Uh, so the 6th Australian Division is sitting here. This is a massive force. It's got an assault value of 479. Uh, again, this is just in the short term. Eventually, I'm going to take them to Karachi and then all the way down to Australia to the land down under. Um, okay. Uh, otherwise, out here, we're training pilots at Hyderabad. We've got some planes at Delhi, these Blenheim 4s. I want to transfer them down the continent a little bit, the subcontinent a little bit. Um, at Madras, we looked at that. Calcutta. We have got a garrison of 611 right now. We do have some Australian artillery here. We've also got the 23rd Indian Division. I know I have another division here, I think. Oh, 36th Indian Brigade. Well, I'll tell you the easy way to find this out. We'll just pop it up right here. Uh, go to type, AA on top. Now infantry's on top. And you can see 23rd Indian Division, 234, the Indian Brigade here. This was supposed to eventually end up in Rangoon, but it did not. 101, and then Assam Rifles. We'll actually take that around the corner. I like to put the Assam Rifles uh, down in this area if I can. Uh, we've got Eastern Command here. A couple of AA units. Uh, great. Okay. Uh, Lado, we're just fi flying over to Kunming with as much supply as we can get in there. Out at Colombo, what do we have going on? Well, we've got two torpedo bombers, level bomber Blenheim's running search. We also have 16 Hurricane 2B Trops. Now that I brought that one group into Madras, I thought maybe I had a group here waiting to go. Okay, these are both 225 group. So this is the group we just dropped down here. We want to take the drop tanks off uh, now that they're all the way down here. And then next time we'll pop them over to Colombo. So Colombo will have two full squadrons of hurricanes uh, to defend against whatever we need to defend against. Uh, you can see I've got some cargo out here that's, you know, going out, trying to get out to Rangoon. He is now at mole mine and so this is huge right he moves to mole mine first how many troops are... now we're saying that's only 2600 troops it's got 36 a afvs i'm gonna guess that's not his entire force uh he is eventually gonna move up here pagu first and then rangoon we're gonna try to hold it if we can but the way he batches up massive armies really the best way to beat him on the ground is to sneak around him and cut off his supply we're gonna have to start fighting a partisan war <laughs> did i say that very that sounded very much drama um cape town Okay, what's going on in Cape Town? What do we have loaded up here? We got the CLAA. I think these are very interesting ships. They're a light cruiser with big anti aircraft. Uh, that's what they're for, you know, is anti aircraft. That's why it's got the AA in the name. What else is here right now? Just a gob of AKs. But as you can see, we're very low on fuel. I have got a lot of fuel coming from the U.S. East Coast that is on the way. You can see all of the things going to Perth, including... Nope, this one's coming back, actually. Nope, we do not want that going to Diego Garcia. That needs to turn around. So we'll turn that... I'll turn that around. Uh, this is going to Perth. That's tankers and AOs. More tankers. Now this... Uh, Abaddon and Abaddon, it's, you know, that, I had this on continuous supply, it automatically popped out of that, uh, but it is heading towards Abaddon, uh, nothing else that interesting there, let's see what's coming from the U.S. East Coast, you can see supply 14,600, another one, Supply 4550, 4850, fuel 14,000. You can see all of the stuff I have come into Cape Town from the U.S. East Coast, including this task force that has 61,000 tons of fuel. And wait, there's more. 
uh, fuel, fuel, 16,000, another 12,800. So we're just taking all of that limitless fuel over on the U.S. East Coast, dropping it into Cape Town as we can. Um, let's go to China. Oh, well, let's look at Rangoon. So I do have a supply ship, you know, this group that got in here. Excellent. You know, they've only got 9,100. You usually would like to have them at 50,000 right now. Uh, but we just, you know, he's pressured us here and we've only gotten this much in. This task force has another 3750. It's not nothing, but it's not great. Uh, the garrison here, 522, and that includes the Burma Corps, uh, 221 Group RAF. Uh, and then we have the 1st Burma Division here, which is the big group, 352 on the assault value. Uh, you know, the replacements are delayed because they're hard to get out here. And so they're not getting in yet. Now you can see all the aircraft we have out here. 12 Hurricane 2B Trops, 15 Hurricane 2B Trops, 14 more. So, I mean, we've got a nice air complement here. And we do have seven Flying Tigers left, shockingly enough. Um, okay, and then at Pagu, we also have, you know, a pretty nice force, including the 17th Indian Division out here. So I've got, what? 350 sitting at Pagu. You add them all together, we get to about 900 AV total, and then we've got a couple of, or I guess it's three units down here at Mole Mine that add up to 103. So in this area, we have about 1,000 AV. It's not going to be enough to stop him if he gets a big enough army over here. Wow, I really gave you some insight there, but just the way he plays by batching up his armies. Uh, into super armies, uh, he's going to have more than enough to take Rangoon. I mean, I've just kind of uh, prepared myself for that. Jumping into China, you know, we've talked a bit about, you know, quite a bit about China recently. Uh, we've got, you know, our fourth war area out here. Uh, we've got third war area. It looks like he's turning around towards Kukong, and I think he's coming to help this group out here at Wu Chao. Now, just looking, he's got about 19,880 troops here. A lot, you know, decent number of guns, decent number of AFVs, but I think he's going to turn his sights down here. He's also got what appears to be a fairly strong army in Canton. Uh, looks like he's going to go after this area because he. it looks like he doesn't want to mess with Heng Yang right now. Probably a good idea. I mean, we've got 1494 in assault value here. And he'd have to go across the river, and we've got a lot of backup here, so probably a good idea. This group, uh, gosh darn it, are they ever going to get out? I mean, it's amazing they're still alive. I'm twisting and turning and trying to get out of this little trap, but uh, haven't been able to do it. Um, I Cheng, you know, our big massive force there. He's moved into Xinyang. He's in Nanyang. He's in Cyan. He's looking at Lan Chao, and I don't know what he's bringing there, but he's also chasing this stack here across China. Um, you know, I've split these two, so he's coming for that. I've got forces moving out of Chongqing as fast as I can, and we keep getting those new forces in here, right? And so if we look at what things are attached to, we've got all of these new cores that we can move out. Now, 66 Chinese core, I always keep, you know, just in Chongqing, but everything here can move out. It can find its group army. And um, we've also got this one down here that's part of Lusu War Area. Lusu War Area is out here. I think it's out with this group. And so we'll start moving that stuff this way. I'm really worried about Lan Chao and then signing together those are worth 600 points, 300 points apiece for the Japanese. Uh, down in the Philippines, you know, it's just a matter of time. Uh, he's here at Cagayan. I keep waiting for it to fall. I don't know that he's got enough there yet. We actually have a decent force there, but he just hasn't taken it yet. Um, if we get down to, well, let's look at Sumatra. We've now been attacked here at Madan. We're going to try to run. <laughs> I was going to put that uh, artfully, but we're going to try to run uh, here at Palembang. You know, we've got a good size force, but he's got a good size force coming up here. And you can see all of the support he's bringing behind that. So matter of time on Palembang, certainly. 
and the same for Batavia and Surabaya. You can see he just keeps stuffing things into the Dutch East Indies here. So uh, we just have to make it as hard for him as possible. As we get down to Australia uh, at Darwin, eh, we need a lot more supply there, right? Uh, we did get Kitty. Oh, these are the, no, I'm wrong. These are the buffaloes that came out of Singapore. We also have some weiraways here. We've got recon, and we have some Catalinas running, you know, this search matrix. Uh, okay, cool. Um, you know, up here, you, uh, if you look at Dobby, it's worth 30, uh, but Broom is worth 70, so 100 points reside right here. We're going to get more and more out here, but it's very hard to supply them. Uh, but we're going to do our best. We're going to try. Uh, Port Hedland has a lot of resources. Usually I'll, what I'll do is I'll take uh, res or, uh, not resources, but supply from Perth to Darwin, unload there, come back through Port Hedland, pick up resources and take them to Perth. And I actually think I'll do it this way this time. The way to do that is have it go there and remain on station. And when we come back next time, it'll be there ready to load resources. As you can see, I keep having boats go back and forth uh, and try to get supply into Darwin if we can. We used to have submarine problems out here by Perth, but I think we've taken care of some of it. I mean, I'm not saying it's completely gone away. There will be more of it. Uh, but we've got a lot of destroyers, ASW work out here. Um, you can see a big tanker force coming in unescorted. Can't have that. And a big supply force coming in as unescorted. So what we'll need to do is take this destroyer, the Voyager. We'll click it out of its patrol zone. We'll say meet the task force. Which one? Let's have him meet the tankers. Meet the tankers. It's like meet the parents. And then you want to hit click merge. What was this? Did I look at this? Does he have a destroyer? No. What are their speeds? 17? Okay. Uh, we also have this destroyer here, the Stuart that was just out here doing patrol zone. We'll clear that. We'll say meet task force. We'll have you meet the first one, the fast one. Um, and we'll merge. All right. Actually, you know what? I don't like that. Why is that? Because this gets to move too far. So let's actually take this one and cancel the meeting we had him set up for. And we'll just click on that one. So it'll meet the 425, merge. You can see where they would, well, I guess it didn't make that big of a difference. They're gonna merge in the same hex either way, uh, unless we go to this and tell it to remain on station. But I don't want that, I want him to keep moving. So this guy instead, we're gonna have to cancel this meeting. We're going to meet the task force, and again, I want it to be those tankers. You can't lose those tankers, and then we'll merge, okay? And then we need to find one more destroyer that wants to go meet somebody. That's an AM. Is that a destroyer? No, AM. Now, AMs, the mine sweepers, they can also do... Uh, oh, he's going out to a patrol zone. They do good ASW, so, you know... There's another one, the Stuart. Let's clear your patrol zone. Meet the task force. This time it'll be the AKs. You can see them in the pop-up. Now it's telling it we'll meet that. Make sure you hit merge so they actually get in the task force. That looks good. And I think, nope, that's an AM. Okay, that should be good, I think. Uh, these AKLs I'm sending up here naked. They're just going to have to deal with it. Um, you know, it's dangerous work up here. I don't want to lose any more destroyers, though. These APs, I could disband them here or send them around the corner so they're not as exposed. Here's our big, I'll call it the Australian task force. You see the cruisers in here, the light cruisers, the destroyers. Um, let's go and see. So these AKs are unloading. Those are good AKs. We have two CLs here, the Sumatra and the Adelaide. Okay, 292. All right, we'll probably put them in this force. So we'll just say transfer ships to and from, and you can see the ones that could go in here. The two CLs we'll put in. Excellent. And what else did we have here? Uh, and let's look at ships under repair. It's just an AK. I was hoping I'd have another destroyer or two. Uh, maybe I have some down here at Albany. 
yeah, there's two sitting with this. So let's form a new task force. Let's make it an ASW combat. We'll go grab one of the destroyers. Okay. And now we'll hit meet task force. And I want him to go meet up with these tankers. Actually, let's do this faster group that's in front. So if there are any subs out here, they should run right over them. Um, his home port will be Perth, just so he doesn't, you know, he's in, he'll become part of the task force he's meeting. Uh, that's how merge works. Uh, but I still, I just go ahead and change him anyway. Uh, so he doesn't try to run off to Cape Town on us. Uh, you've heard about sailors that have done that. Oh, I almost forgot to mention here that we do uh, have some uh, a damage ship trying to get back. You can look at it, see that 64 system. It's only got an eight float damage. It is on fire, though. You can see the 89 fire. That is probably going to go down just because it's on fire. Uh, you know, the float right now, anyway, it, it would stay all the way down to Perth. But uh, if, when it's on fire like that, the float damage will start to rise up pretty quickly. Um, what else? Well, down here at Albany, you know, now we've got this uh, destroyer going out. we got some stuff unloading here. We have 14 ships at port. A lot of support ships there. Uh, over at Esperance, uh, not a whole lot going on here. We do have seven ships at port. All of them are these little AKs. I do, let's see. Yeah, we got uh, something coming in here. I think this is the transport I've been looking for. There it is. It's got American troops on it, of all things. 182nd Infantry, 132nd Infantry, 754th Tank Battalion. I took them all the way from the East Coast to Cape Town and now around into Australia. Just to give it a different look, I've got plenty coming from the West Coast over to Australia. And so I just wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit uh, so it doesn't get too predictable. Um, I've also got a lot of... Well, not a lot. I thought it was more than this. A few AVBs coming down here to Melbourne. And we talked some about Australia last time. I guess I was going to talk a little bit more about Northern Australia. Uh, but eh, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we've got a bunch of support ships, American support ships that are coming in here. Uh, we do not want them to unload, actually, so we'll just disband them. Now, Melbourne may not quite be safe enough for them. We may have to go up to Adelaide, Port Augusta, maybe even over to Esperance, something like that. You can see we don't have any fighters over the top. That's the problem that got we got in in Bombay. I was not used to playing two-day turns before, and I don't want to happen here what happened up in Bombay, which is... You know, I'm used to playing one-day turns, and so I would get notification, hey, he's got his carriers coming down here. You know, in the Bombay situation, they're coming to Bombay. You have time then to get your task forces together and get the heck, heck out of Dodge. Well, with two-day turns, he can go from the Coral Sea here, whoop, whoop. Before you know it, he's parked in front of Melbourne. Now it's our turn. Like, oh, crap. You've got to be a lot more prepared with the two-day turns. I do have this transport. Why? Oh, it's trying to go back to Los Angeles. Well, we're sure as heck not going to let it go back this way. We'll have to... We'll have to set this up. Now, it can't quite make it there. Instead, what we would want to do is do waypoints, use waypoints, set waypoint one, come down to, let's say, does Wellington have any fuel? No. Have it come through Auckland, maybe? Uh, what's the fuel over here? Yeah, 54,000. So we'll have it come down to Auckland, uh, and we'll say minimal or tactical refuel. Okay, and then hit waypoint two, because we don't want it to head up this way. Instead, we'll have it come through, let's say, Tahiti. Uh, and you could also put this on tactical refuel, but it should refuel enough here at Auckland uh, that with the TAC refuel, it'd be 50% more than it needs to get to Los Angeles. But I'll just put that on minimal refuel in case it doesn't get enough at Auckland for whatever reason. I've always wondered in this game, I guess it's just how Auckland is actually set up, but ships always want to come in to Auckland from the east. I guess Auckland, you know, it's hard to tell on this map. My guess is that Auckland is actually on the east 
eastern part of this isthmus, or at least the port of Auckland is, uh, because they always want to go up and around, even though it would seem to make sense to go here, maybe, and then go, uh, it wants to go up and around, but they always do that. They always want to come in from the east out of Auckland. Maybe one of you uh, Kiwis can let me know about that, uh, whether that's actually accurate or if it's just a weird gamey, gaming thing. I don't know. Um, okay, at Melbourne, we don't have much strength and we don't have much air cover. Uh, it's kind of as simple as that. We are going to get more fighters. We'll get some Kitty Hawks here. We'll get some more American fighters, I certainly hope. Uh, off to Sydney. At Sydney, we do have Warhawks and Aracobra. So I could put this group of uh, Warhawks down in Melbourne just so we have some air coverage, and maybe I'll do that. We've also got transport coming in. Now, this went out and to Nomaya. It got hit with something. The destroyer did. I don't remember that off the top of my head. Uh, but we'll probably have to, well, not probably, we will have to repair that, so we'll get about it. Uh, Brisbane, what's going on in Brisbane? Uh, we've got, uh, the Catalinas here, we've got dive bombers, banshees, I like to have them at, like, Brisbane and Townsville, just in case he gets a little too close to the, uh, coastline. And then we've also, so those are banshees, those, oh, they're both banshees, okay. And I've got them both on training. As you can see, this one's at 41 experience. This one's 43. That's not going to cut it. Uh, so we need those to build up. We've got American forces in Australia now. It's not an invasion. We're, we're here to defend you. We are friends. We come in friendship. Uh, 126 uh, AV on the 161st Infantry. They are making their way up to... Rockhampton. And I usually like to put American forces in Rockhampton, Bundaberg, Bowen, kind of these areas, maybe even into Brisbane, kind of in the middle. So they can react if the Japanese try to land north or if they try to land south, we can get them, you know, there quickly and we can concentrate Australian forces mainly on, you know, Townsville, Sydney, and Melbourne you know that's where I really keep most of my Australian forces and then American forces in Brisbane you know a little maybe something in Maryborough uh, Bundaberg but really Rockhampton we've talked about this before Rockhampton very popular place for the Japanese to land uh, we've got motorized units uh, because I like to you know stay as flexible as possible here we've also got uh, some artillery 109th tank attack regiment okay cool uh at rockhampton i've already got one american infantry regiment the 185th we've got some warhawks here and we have some catalinas oh that reminds me we did get the kitty hawks in or no no no, no. we get those in in the next couple of turns i think at brisbane and at perth now this group so at march 15th these Warhawks have to leave that are out at Perth. Luckily enough, we do get the Kitty Hawks in there. They're not as good. The pilots aren't as good, uh, but at least we have some planes. Bowen, okay, we've got an American tank battalion here, the 193rd. At Townsville, we've got a lot of Australian troops, you can see. First Australian Corps here. I've got some stuff moving up and around to Cookton uh, at Cons, we've got uh, 23 Warhawks. I keep them here because they cover Townsville and Cookton. So, or Cooktown, whichever one it is. Um, it covers both if they're in Cons. So, you know, it's got a level 2 airfield. I'm trying to bump that up, obviously. Townsville has a level 4. It's got Kitty Hawks, so we've got pretty good air coverage right here. We are bringing a base force here to Charters Towers. Why? Well, it's already a level four airfield, and we can take that all the way to the top if we want to, uh, and just use Charters Towers for nothing but air. Uh, you can put B-17s here if you want to start bombing things, etc. Uh, down in New Zealand, um, you know, it's all about Auckland. We've got the transports that we talked about. We've got a lot of fighters down here. Some of these, like these Air Cobras that are in two U.S., we need to put on drop tanks and get uh, up to the islands. 
and these Air Cobras as well are two U.S. fighter. All three of these groups we'll put up here in Nomaya, Suva, and Pago Pago, right? Uh, what else do we have here? We've got some tankers. These need to go to Los Angeles. We do not want them to route that way, so we'll use waypoints, and we'll set the waypoint one through Tahiti, probably, or Haiva Oa, you could do. Uh, so we'll have it go that way instead. Do not refuel. We don't need to. Uh, I just want them to go that direction. We've also got a huge tanker group going to Melbourne here. You'll see they'll need to refuel, but they can because they're bringing 56,000 tons of fuel. We've also got some uh, cargo ships here that are bringing stuff into Wellington. Okay, cool. Now, I said we were going to talk about these islands a little bit. New Caledonia at Comac. You know, I've got some anti-air and I've got some French troops right there. 28 on the assault, uh, but I've got a lot of stuff landing out here. What I say, a lot of stuff. Look at this transport group. Cannot afford to have this get blown away. Um, unfortunately, I, I'm scared uh, of his carriers because they can get down here so fast that uh, we just got to hope we don't lose them. Now, they're mainly unloaded here. Make sure, for the most part, you don't bring supply and fuel along because it'll slow down your unloading. Uh, we mainly just want to get the troops off and get them out of here, but I have got a lot of points sitting here at Nomaya right now, including the 2nd Marine Regiment uh, that we're dropping off here. So you can see now at Nomaya, I have two Coastal AA Regiments, two engineer aviation battalions, a second marine defense battalion. Oh, that's what that is. Uh, base force, the second marine regiment. Okay, so that is there. And a third anti-aircraft. So we, we're dropping a lot off here, uh, but you got to get that built up. We're also uh, going to bring a lot of planes in here. You can see Catalina, Banshees, Marauders, 17 Warhawks, 24 era cobras so we're building that out it's a level two airfield you can see now it's overstacked it's got to build or we'll have to move some things off of here um and we're building it but we need you know we've got 21,000 supply out here that's not bad uh but we'll need to move some of these planes around we're building up a fate and you can see even more trans i've got a lot out here now we have got to pray his carriers don't get down here uh, because uh, that's just way too many points uh, to give up. I probably shouldn't have them all in here at the same time. But, you know, anytime I see his carriers move away, I'm trying to jump out here and do what I can. We've already had transports drop off out here because out of Fate, you'll see we have got uh, the 3rd Marine Raider. We've got 2 5th uh, Koi. And we've got the Catherine Base Force at Luganville. We've also dropped off um, not as much here. And we've got Catalinas because look at that search. You know, you can really tell. But it doesn't matter. He could have his carriers, you know, right here, right here. And he could be right here by the time, the next time we see the game. Uh, and it's been very challenging for these two day turns. I'm not sure. Well, I like the two-day turns. I'll just leave it at that. It just makes it a lot riskier running big transport groups, uh, certainly, uh, up to these islands. So, Afate, Luganville, we're building. Uh, you've got Nadi that we've got some troops, including American artillery over here, but the big ball game here is Suva, right? And we'll probably take some of the planes, one of the fighter groups maybe, or one of the dive bomber groups, and move it over to Suva so it's no longer overstacked. We have only got 25 Era Cobras here, so we'll, we will take one of the fighters over to Suva. We've also got Mitchells and Marauders here. Uh, the Jarvis is sitting out here. You can see he's got subs in the area, so I'm going to do some ASW work out here. We've got a lot of troops. Uh, they only add up to a 243, surprisingly, given the number of counters but uh, Suva is the big ball game out in this area. Pago Pago is where kind of you stage up here, right? If you go straight into Suva, they're probably eventually, these ships are going to get destroyed 
a lot of times. So you come into Pago first, especially with the planes, and then you fly them over to Suva and Nomaya if you can. Um, we've got a lot of support vessels that were here. Here are some of them. I'm going to take these, you know, uh, down here somewhere. Tahiti, Haiva, Oa. We'll just hide them. You can see we've got a really nice defense force here. We've got base force, anti-aircraft, artillery, a marine defense, uh, the Samoan Marine Battalion, 8th Marine Regiment. So, you know, we're decked out here at Pago. It only adds up to a 210. I say only, but on a small island like this, it's going to be very hard for the Japanese to take that unless, I mean, they've got, you know, massive, massive transport fleet, in which case we can get our carriers down here and see what we can do about that. Otherwise, uh, Canton, we're building here. We've got a transport out here because we've now put the 2nd U.S. Marine Corps Parachute Battalion out here at Canton. We do have some Era Cobras up here. Okay, why not? He, he left us with Canton. We'll take it. We're building Rarotonga. I think that's just cargo coming in. Tahiti, of course, one of my bigger bases out here. 26,000 supply. We need more fuel here, but we're also staging troops here that we could later take forward. Because look, if the Japanese come and take Tahiti, you've probably already lost the game. Uh, you know, I mean, this is way down here. So I stage troops here. I wait till the coast is clear. Or as we're starting to advance out here and then we'll move them forward you can see all of the task forces that are moving to and fro and then we get to Haiva Oa that has got a lot of action happening as well also bring transports tankers whatever the case may be just have them sit here make sure the coast is clear and then send them out um yeah, we've got an infantry battalion with an assault of 39 here. We'll eventually want to move that forward. Of course, you know, uh, otherwise you've got Canton here, but you've got Christmas, Palmyra. We've talked a bit about those. Uh, we'll maybe touch on them next episode. So anyway, uh, that is kind of the rundown of where we stand. Still more and more moving off the U.S. West Coast. Uh, we're trying to stock up these islands. But this is the danger zone, to quote Kenny Loggins. Uh, we've got to make sure these transports get out of here without getting destroyed, or that is a lot of points, a lot of points. So anyway, till next time, uh, we'll see the combat resolution of the 11th and 12th when next we talk. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Have a great one. Thanks for joining me.